Howdy my totally tubular gamers and we are back for, you guessed it, another ranking video. Now I thought for the month of anime we're going to do something interesting. We're going to do something a little different from the normal ranking video. We're going to be ranking two different series actually. However, these two different series are very interconnected and are essentially one series. And all of it is got one big common thread. All of these games are by Yoko Taro in some extent. If you don't know these two series we're talking about and you didn't read the title, it is Drakengard and Nair. Both of these series have been around for well over a decade now and are very connected and are essentially one series. And Yoko Taro is the man behind these two series. He is the mastermind behind these two game series and have created really this just crazy video game world to the likes of no other game really as his games are very profound have a lot of deep themes and are very connected in ways that the normal player might not even realize and so while Drakengard and Nair might be two totally different names and two different series technically I can confirm that they are essentially the same series they're both together they're under the same umbrella and I thought hey today let's rank them that's right, we're going to rank Yoko Taro's six main games, the three Drakengard games and the three Nair games, and see which ones are the best. Now, if you don't know these two series, both of them are pretty similar when it comes to gameplay. They're both action RPGs. They all have some form of hack and slash kind of gameplay mixed with a lot of RPG elements. And all of these games have very dark, deep, gripping stories that have grabbed gamers for years now and all of these games have become cult favorites as they just have stories that have never been told in video games before and are wholly unique. This will be a very spoiler free video I will only talk about the basic premise of each game at most. In fact it's become a little bit well known that these games don't exactly have the best gameplay it's the stories that really grab people with these games as in all honesty, a lot of the gameplay for most of these games, if not almost all of them, are pretty subpar. However, we're going to be ranking these games based on everything. We're going to be ranking them based on the story, based on the themes, based on the gameplay, based off of how accessible it actually is. And so what do I think is Yoko Taro's worst game? What do I think is the worst game in the Drakengard slash Nier series? Well, I think it's Drakengard 2. Now, Drakengard 2, I will say is not actually by Yoko Taro. You see, Yoko Taro was involved in Dragon Guard 2's development, but ultimately, it's not a Yoko Taro game. He was a advisor at most. I'm really just including this game more as a Dragon Guard game rather than a straight Yoko Taro game, and it's easily the worst of these six games. Due to the game not being directed by Yoko Taro and just having his involvement a little bit, it's considered not canon in the Drakengard series, and that makes sense. This game doesn't have all that much to do with the first Drakengard anyway, though. The game takes place well after the first game and sees our new protagonist, Noe, who is a knight of the seal. He's a knight and he fights all that is evil and some evil breaks the knight's seal, so it's up for him to fight the evil. That's the most basic premise of the story imaginable and I'm going to leave it at that. I thought the story was actually the weakest of all the Drakengard slash Nair games. I mean, figures. It's not by Yoko Taro directly. Obviously, it's going to have the weakest story. The themes are nowhere near as dark or serious as the first Drakengard, and they're just way less interesting. The new characters are way less interesting. Any connection to the first game is easily the best part of this game in terms of story, and I thought that it was really lacking in just about every area. The gameplay is relatively similar to the first game where there's two types of combat that you'll be involved in on ground and on a dragon. Like the first game, they both still suck. The ground combat is a bad Dynasty Warriors ripoff that is somehow worse than Dynasty Warriors. It is one of the stiffest hack and slashes ever made. It still controls like ass, the combos are unsatisfying, and the game gets very benign quickly. The air combat is exactly the same as well as the first game, only the dragon controls a little differently, it's a little more agile, and it's honestly really just at best it's serviceable, but there's nothing special about this. I think the camera's a bit better than the first game, that's a plus. Overall, didn't have a good time with this game, don't think it's very good. There's really nothing of merit here in my opinion. Yoko Taro's gone off to say this is just a Drakengard spin-off. I have it here purely because I'm ranking the Drakengard and Nair games. I didn't really want to include this game, it's not worth including, it's not good, it's not even by Yoko Taro. Let's get to the actual Yoko Taro games that people like, so don't recommend this game. 
Alright, a true Yoko Taro game in the Drakengard franchise, and the next game on our list is Drakengard 1, the original game directed by Yoko Taro. It was the first game directed by Yoko Taro, and with this, he wanted to create something really dark, depressing, and a very interesting, different, profound world, and I think with Drakengard, he absolutely did that. Something Drakengard 1 has to it is its really dark, foreboding atmosphere and generally dark world. Drakengard 1 is a very serious, depressing, just dark game in general, with a lot of pervasive themes that had not been seen at the time. There really was no other game like this at the time, like, he has made a really unsettling world. This is easily Yoko Taro's most unsettling, dark game. And it's, it's definitely one of the most depressing games I've ever played. The world of Drakengard is known as Midgard, not from Final Fantasy VII. And it sees a big battle going on for various reasons. And you play as Kaim, a soldier in the battle, a really high-ranking guy. And he's trying to rescue someone in this big battle that is happening at a castle. Well, he just gets totally messed up in the battle because he's not amazing and he's about to die. He actually comes across a dragon when he's about to die in the castle who was also almost about to die because they shot the dragon down. This world is dragons, orcs, elves, all that great stuff. It's very fantasy based. Well, the dragon actually makes a pact with Kai. The two of them make a pact so that neither of them die. They share a life force and become stronger and are able to live because of it. And I'm just going to say that some real shit goes down in this game that I'm not going to spoil, despite how old the game is. The themes are still very profound and are very, very not commonplace in a game released even nowadays. If you want to know more, I'd recommend you watch Clemp's Drakengard analysis video, as that's just... There's a whole can of worms to unpack with this game, and that's not going to be what this video is about. The story's very good, and I'll leave it at that. Now, the gameplay in Drakengard is, well... Not good. The reason that this game is so low on the list is because the gameplay frankly just sucks. Like, there's really nothing good to this gameplay. It's very mediocre to just bad. It wasn't good when it came out, and it's even worse to come back to now. The gameplay is a mashup of Dynasty Warriors and Ace Combat, and fails to be as good as either of those series. There's two types of gameplay. There's on foot and on the dragon. Now when you're on foot, it does try to be more like Dynasty Warriors, and you do have some basic combos and you fight just tons and tons of enemies. And it's not even as good as the old Dynasty Warriors games, like it's somehow worse. The combat in this game on foot is just terrible. It is beyond unsatisfying, with very lame combos that aren't even as good as the old Dynasty Warriors games. Like, how do you do that? It's extremely stiff, it's unrewarding, a lot of the enemies attack you from behind and it's cheap, the camera's terrible, there's really nothing good about this gameplay in the slightest. The RPG elements don't help it either, as it honestly could just lead to grinding, which just makes this even worse because I don't want to do any combat in this game because it's so bad. The Dragoon combat is a little better, it is more like ace combat, you can fly freely around, it doesn't control all that bad, the general shooting stuff down, it, it's okay, it's not great, it's again not very satisfying like the on ground combat, but it's not the worst thing, it's not as bad as the ground combat, it's at least like passable, it's serviceable at best. But this game, if you couldn't tell, is very much a game about its story, its world, its characters, and themes rather than being an actual video game, because when it comes to the video game aspects, I think this game is, is pretty bad. It comes down to how much bullshit you're willing to put up with for this excellent story. I can't recommend this game. Recommend you watch an analysis video. That stuff's really good. The story's great. All that's great. Anyway, let's get on to the next game. Now the next game on our list is actually the original Nier. Now the original Nier was released back in 2010 for the PS3 and Xbox 360. Interesting is the word I would use to describe Nier. Now it actually takes place after the secret ending of Drakengard 1. Yeah, there is a secret ending in the original Drakengard that was more of an easter egg and well, that's what this game takes place after. So yeah, they're connected. If you're playing in the West, it sees this ugly, old-ass man trying to protect his daughter from this disease she has. He's just trying to find a cure. Humanity is basically on the brink of extinction, and there's these monsters called the Black Scroll that go around kind of just killing everyone, and he's just trying to protect his daughter. Near story, it is so good. It is so good. I love Nair's story. Like, this game is just very well done when it comes to everything in relation to the story, the characters, the world, the progression, the voice acting, the music, all of that. Very well done. I have nothing but the highest praise for it, as it is just superb. 
This really was the game that was kind of getting Yoko Taro on the map, at least out of the very small circles he was probably in. And there's a reason for that, because the story is just absolutely superb. I have nothing but the highest praise for it, and it's some of the best video game writing I've seen ever, actually. All the characters, their growth, how much they change, the world, how it changes, and just everything really surrounding that, I can't give it enough praise. Like, truly excellent. It's just amazing. But then you probably go, well, why is this game only number four if you're giving it so much praise? It's the gameplay. Sadly, the gameplay, I feel, is very mediocre to bad in this game, and it's not really any better than Drakengard, really. It plays more like an actual role-playing game, much more than Drakengard, and it is strictly on the ground. There's no dragon combat. There is occasionally some, like, bullet hell thrown in there, but it's mostly a hack-and-slash action RPG. It's just a shame that it just is not good. I could not get into this gameplay at all. The game's combat is just wholly unsatisfying. It feels terrible, it's beyond basic, it's not even close to fun, and I just never had a good time with the combat in this game. The magic system just seems very basic, it seems very underdeveloped, and it just doesn't really go anywhere. Fighting these enemies is just not even close to engaging. I just never had a good time fighting anything in this game. I remember just being either annoyed or bored whenever I'd have to fight anything in this game, and you do so much of it. On top of that, this game is a very repetitive structure to it, much more than maybe any of the other Yoko Taro games. It's just go to Popola, go to Popola, go to Popola every freaking time, and I just never really had any fun playing the game. I always had a much better time watching the cutscenes, seeing the story unfold, getting invested and sucked into this world. That is the good aspects of Nier, not this shallow, bland, boring combat that is just really overstays its welcome. And then don't even get me started on getting those other endings. The amount of extra gameplay you have to do with this bad combat, I just couldn't see myself, I couldn't bring myself to do it. And that's why it's not super high on this list, despite the game having a fantastic story, is because I just hate this gameplay. This won't be the only time the original Nair is on this list, though. The next game on our Yoko Taro list is Drakengard 3, the latest in the actual Drakengard series released for the PS3. The game takes place in an alternate universe before the original Drakengard. The game stars Zero, a very angry woman who wants to kill her five sisters, and I'm gonna just leave the story at that. Similar to the original Drakengard, it is a very dark, and I mean very dark, storyline that has a lot of interesting twists and turns, and Zero herself is actually a pretty good protagonist, much better than Kaim from the original. This is a very angry woman who wants to kill pretty much everything that can move, and I gotta say it leads to some very humorous interactions she has with her dragon that is, well, he's a little kid, basically. The story of Drakengard 3 is quite good. Is it as good as the original Nier's? No, I would say the Drakengard 3 does not have a better story than the original Nier. I do like the characters of Drakengard 3, I like the way the game progresses, I like Zero a lot, and I like the, the way the game ends. I just think that Nier was better. Again, like the original Drakengard, very violent, very gory. This game is just very gory, brutal. I mean, the story's about her killing her own sisters. Of course it's gonna be brutal. Now maybe you're wondering, you're probably not, but maybe you're wondering, why is this game ranked higher than Nier if you think Nier is a better story? Because the gameplay in this game is actually, I don't know, good? Now don't get me wrong, Dragonguard 3 doesn't have great gameplay, but it has serviceable gameplay. It is actually alright, it can be kind of fun, it's somewhat satisfying, it's definitely better than Nier's, and I can say that that really puts it over Nier for me. The game is more in line with the original Drakengard and is more of a straight hack and slash game rather than action RPG. Most of the game is on foot where you play a zero and you're just basically killing everything that moves and then sometimes you're on the dragon and this is more like Star Fox. The hack and slash gameplay is not amazing by any means. I mean again it is serviceable. I wouldn't say it's even as good as something like Darksiders but it is a decently fun time, it's satisfying, a lot of the weapons feel nice, it's not stiff as hell, the enemies die appropriately, the game is very gory and it's satisfying in that aspect, all the weapons have a nice impact, and it was generally okay, the levels are not super annoying, they're not really long, they're not these big drawn out battles like the original Drakengard. The combat is decent at best and isn't stiff as hell. The dragon combat isn't very good, again it's like Star Fox, you're just kind of flying around on a track shooting everything that moves. This is, eh, 
I could really take it or leave it. There's nothing here to even talk about. It's just not all that good. While the game does look pretty good for a late PS3 game, unfortunately the frame rate is pretty bad in this game, and a lot of the time it's just kind of dying and you'll rarely even be at 30 FPS. Eventually my eyes just got used to it. That's not good. Overall, for Drakengard 3, this is really the only Drakengard game I can say that is actually worth playing, not just watching something about. It's actually worth playing the game, I can actually recommend it. Sure, there are some caveats, frame rate sucks, gameplay isn't amazing, but the story's quite good, and the gameplay at least is serviceable. There is that. Unfortunately, it is still stuck on the PS3. Hopefully it comes to something modern in the future, otherwise this is going to be an expensive game. But I can actually, yes, recommend it. It is worth trying. Now the next game on the list is our most recent Drakengard slash Nier game and most recent Yoko Taro game. That is Nier Replicant version 1.22... No, I'm not going to read the numbers. Anyway, it's the most recent game. This game is actually a remake of the original Nier, and I'd say there's enough in here to be a remake rather than a remaster, and it gets its own entry. And this version of Nier is absolutely the best way to play Nier. Instead of it being a dad protecting his daughter from a disease, it is now a brother protecting his sister from the Black Scroll. Other than that though, the story is pretty much the same, and I gotta say, the story in Nair is just so good, man. This story is just so good, and like, with it being the brother now instead of the sister, sure, at first I was like, this is a little less captivating, this is a little less interesting to me, I'm not so big on the brother-sister as opposed to dad and daughter, but like, the story makes so much more sense with the brother than instead of dad near. Everything I said for Nair about the story, like, oh, it's so good in this game. Oh my god, man, it is so good. I love the story in this game, and you know what? The game is actually worth playing this time. This game addresses my biggest issue from the original in my ear, and that is the combat. The combat in this game is actually good. Like, it's not just good, it's actually pretty good. It's fun. It's engaging. It's just really satisfying. It's like, yes, yes, thank you, finally. We have now the perfect blend. We have good gameplay, good combat, and then the superb story of Nier. Like, yes, this is what I really wanted. It's engaging. There's combos. It's actually fun. What? What is this? It's actually, it's just good. Sure, the magic is still pretty underdeveloped, but the actual, like, sword combat or spear combat, whatever you're using, it's, it's good. It's worth playing, and I'm just like, oh, yes, this is exactly what was needed for the original Nair. Do not even bother with the original game. This game just shits all over it. Like, when I first put this game in, like, I couldn't put it down. I played, like, 12 hours straight. I was just like, oh my god, man. The story, I forgot how amazing this story is. And then the gameplay, it's, it's good. It's like I really was just, like, encaptured into this world. And I was just so invested in it immediately. All those great points from Nier, they're all here. They're even better than they were before because you want to see everything. You want to do everything. You want to learn everything about this world because you actually want to play the game. And it's like, wow, this is awesome. There's even some bonus stuff at the end of the game. Yeah, they actually add a little extra ending. No spoilers, obviously, but they add some extra stuff here at the end of the game. So it's really worth it to go all the way through the game and see all the game's endings. It really is worth it. And I have no problem recommending this game. It is very solid. It is an unforgettable experience. And the game has tons of new music in it. And obviously the original game, when it came to the music and the voice acting, is unparalleled. It was just superb. And this, this new stuff, just as good. Mmm, so good. But I don't think it's Yoko Taro's magnum opus. I don't think it's his best game. It's real close, don't get me wrong. But I think his best game, it's probably pretty obvious now. His best game, I think, is Nier Automata. I think this game is just superb. Like, it is the game that really brought Yoko Taro into the mainstream, it brought Nier into the mainstream, it no longer was this kind of just niche franchise that barely anybody cared about, other than some small circles, no. This was mainstream, it was big time, 2B is a very popular character, and there's a reason. This game is superb. It was the game that brought me in to the series and Yoko Taro as a whole because I was just like hot damn this is a really good game now there is a big thing about Nier Automata as to why it's the best game not only is the story amazing but the game was actually developed by Platinum Games for the most part if you don't know Platinum Games somehow they did Bayonetta they did Vanquish they did Mad World and they did this game and I would say this is their best game 
It really is a best of both worlds. They took the story and world and characters from Yoko Taro. It's such a great aspect of those previous games, really the only good aspect of some of those games, and they put it with Platinum Games' amazing action gameplay. This is a great hack and slash on every level, and it's a great RPG as well. The game barely has anything to do with the other Nairs, and takes place very, very far in the future, and stars 2B, a combat android, and she's fighting robots, and I'm just gonna leave it at that, I don't want to even talk any more about the story because it's just that damn good. I'd say it's tied with the original Nier as the best story Yoko Taro's ever put out in a game, and it's up there as one of my favorite video game stories of all time. It's definitely in the top 10. Like, I just love the story of Nier Automata, and I just love how the game progresses, I love how the characters change, the mission changes, the world, the robots. Ooh, I could be here all day. In fact, I've already been here all day. Look how long this video is. I have nothing but praise for the stories of all these games, but Nier Automata, oh man, it hit different though. This game is just something special. It really is just something special. There's never been a game even close to this when it comes to the story or the world or any of that stuff. Like, it's just not even close. It is absolutely phenomenal. And the gameplay is easily the best gameplay in the entire series. Like, it's not even close. I mean, it wasn't developed really by Square Enix or any of their teams. It was by Platinum, who know how to make excellent hack and slash games. All of their games are great. This game is also great. It's the most fluid of any of these games. It has the best combos. It's the most in-depth. There's the most weapons. There's the most variety. It has everything. It's fun to traverse the world, the world is interesting, the side quests are actually even worth bringing up. I didn't even bring up the side quests for the other two Nairs because they're just so bad. And it's like, wow, everything just hits on all cylinders here. Some of the other gameplay styles that were in the original Nair a little bit, like the text adventure and the shoot 'em up it's expanded on here. It's really good. I really enjoyed it. The game is 26 different endings. Yes, 26 different endings. All of them are pretty cool. Obviously, some are better than others but that's still really cool. If you couldn't really tell, I'm just kind of sucking this game off at this point, but I love Thick Robot 2B, yeah? Okay, besides her, and besides those thighs and all that. Besides all that, the game is actually just completely worth playing. If you haven't played the game for some reason by now, what are you waiting for? Go play it now. Like, out of all the games on this list, if you're gonna play one, it's definitely gonna be Automata. Like, there's no reason not to, and yeah, just check it out. I mean, I, I could be here all day talking about how great this game is, but this video has already gone on long enough for me. Anyway, that's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Nier, Nier Automata, Dragon Guard, they're all some pretty cool games. Yoko Taro, pretty cool guy. And if you want to see me do more videos like this in the future where I rank all the games by somebody or a developer or whatever, you let me know. Anyway. Have a great Christmas, New Year's, 4th of July, Valentine's Day, Easter, Hanukkah, Chinese New Year, whatever the hell it is, see you later.